Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guillermo Auto. I'm doing a compressor on a 98 Chevy Blazer. I'm also doing the accumulator and the orifice tube for uh, the new compressor's longevity and for the warranty. Uh, as you can see, mine's bad. Uh, if yours looks like this, it'd possibly be bad, too. And mine's been... The AC's not been blowing cold, and this compressor's all covered in seepage. Uh, if you look around here, you can just see this black stuff. This is the refrigerant oil. It's just collecting dust and grime. Um... So, got a new one here. I got this off Rock Auto. Uh, I got my new compressor, an accumulator, an Orphus tube, O-rings kit. And these are just like, um, these are for the bolts in case I need to raise it up or lower it. Uh, this came as a kit. I think it was like 150 I had this Pag Oil too. I got this uh, at AutoZone though. It didn't come with it. Uh, this is like 140 or 150 bucks. Um, this new compressor takes Pag 46. It's an aftermarket one. So, I'm going to go and I got my 46. Um, first thing I'm going to do is come down and take take the belt off. I drew a little diagram. Um, you should draw one too or just use mine. Uh, it's down here. This is the tensioner and a little ratchet goes in this spot right here. And then you loosen it up. That's an aftermarket tensioner so yours might be different. Uh, yeah, put the ratchet in here, bend it out, and then the belt will loosen and you can remove it. All right, so once the belt is out, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this 13 millimeter bolt up here for the manifold. Go like this, and uh, some some gas will come out, so you might wanna put a rag on it or just be aware, don't put your face close to it. So I got this out, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. Move this manifold aside a little bit. And uh, take note of these O-rings, we'll have to replace those later. Now I'm going to disconnect this connector. I'm just going to give it a little flathead in here and loosen it up and pull it out. Comes off like that. Now I'm going to take these 13 millimeter bolts off. And just loosen those. And also get these out the way for that uh, back bolt. Uh, you can just squeeze these with like some pliers and push up. I use these. See, I just squeeze the bottom and I pull them out of that little bracket and I can get to that bolt back there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my bolt out. Get my other one out. Okay. Hold on one sec. Okay. So I got my, uh, I'm going to get my front bolt out. And these will be reused, so don't lose these. All right, go ahead and get these off. And this should just come right out. Just lift it out. As you can see, there's a connector back here too, so we'll get that off. Don't rip that out. It's a little black connector, it unplugs. All right, got that off. Now this will come right out. Here it is. And look, on the bottom, you can tell it was, that's where it was really leaking, is all the oil. So all the refrigerant is probably coming out too. It's all over my mount too. I'm going to clean this mount, make it look better. <clears throat> Alright, so I got my two compressors. You notice my old one has a sensor, and this new one doesn't have the sensor, but it does have a spot for it. Um, it's held in by a C-clip, the sensor. So we're going to take that C-clip out and switch it over here. I already took the C-clip out of my new one. You'll have to do that. See, this is my new one. I just took the C-clip off and pulled this little guy out. I use these little pliers, like nothing strong at all. The C-clip is really easy to come out. So, got my sensor out now. I'm going to put it in this spot. Okay, so yeah, clean the sensor too, so there's no grime or anything. Alright, so I put my sensor in. I'm going to wiggle it in, twist it in, push it in, whatever I got to do to get it in there. One sec, get this sensor in. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so I got my sensor in, and then I put the clip in. I put the clip in there. All right, so I went ahead and put that in. That's in now. And uh, I'm matching these up. I'm not going to use these. These go like underneath here. I, I don't need to. It's the same size. So I don't think it's going to be a deal or nothing like that. 
All right, so now I'm gonna take this cover off right here. Twist all the old compressor oil out. That's just the oil they put in it to ship with, but you wanna get all that out. So I'm gonna remove this bolt. Here's a 16 millimeter. Take this off and twist all my old oil out. What I mean by twist is I'm just gonna turn the whole clutch pulley and then all that oil will come out. Uh, there wasn't much in here, but I'm gonna put some in. Um, I'm gonna put some in and then twist the, com the compressor uh, pulley to get this oil all in there and get all the you know all the internals lubed up also when I get it on the car I'm gonna do that as well and then um, when you have some oil in put the cover on and let it sit like this for five minutes uh, I learned this in the class they said do that and it, it lubricates the front seal so I'm gonna get some oil in like that and then I'm gonna slowly just twist the pulley. Careful, it'll shoot out on you too. Um, just, just like I said, to get the internals all lubed up and oiled. You know, kind of like priming the, the compressor. Watch out, it'll shoot on you. Um, but yeah, you definitely wanna do that. I just pour it in and keep going until it comes out the other side. Like see right here, I was twisting it and now it just comes out the other side. Uh, but now I'm gonna put my cap on and uh, Put it on the uh, car and then when I have the manifold hooked up I'll probably rotate the pulley some more to make sure everything's lubed up in there got to make a mess like I did and again I'm gonna put it like this to let the front seals set and then I'm also gonna flip it on the back too to uh, let it get some oil both ways just to be safe you don't have to do this I just do it because I'm paranoid about you know compressor something that's a dry spot in there ruining everything um, but yeah, so I clean my mount too while that's doing that. So I, I put my compressor on and I connected the connector in the back. Don't forget that. Put your bolts in. All right, so I got I put all my bolts in. I'm just going to tighten them all down. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to tighten them a little bit and then go through with a ratchet and finish tightening it. All right. Going through and tightening this. Okay, so I'm gonna run these bolts in. All right, and then I'm gonna go back through with a ratchet and tighten them down too. And so with my my little manifold, I'm gonna change out these gaskets on here. Um, I got a new set that came with my gasket set, so I pulled them off. Here's here's them, and then um, I just matched them up with the ones in my my bag. And those are them, so that's pretty easy. Go ahead and replace these, and I'm also gonna pour a little bit of um, um, oil down both of the lines and let it just kind of get in there just to get more oil in the system. Just like that, I'll hold the lines up. All right, so now I'm gonna take this uh, 16 off here, as and just remove this uh, cap. Don't drop your bolt like I did, and then. Um, Take this off, put my lines on. All right, I got my manifold set on. And I made sure the lines run, you know, normal, and not twisted or anything like that. I'm going to run this down. And then after I after I tighten with this gun, I'm going to run down with the ratchet too, just to make sure it's tight. And I'm going to put these cables back in place. Here's the connector. I just connected it, and then I'm going to uh, zip tie the connector to a safe spot so those wires don't get in the way or nothing. Um, I'm thinking over here by these cables where these cables mount there's a little hole I'll just zip tie it there right over here and then afterwards I got it zip tied I'm gonna go ahead and put like a plastic cover on those wires too or something to just protect those wires so they're not like sitting on the hot compressor nothing like that so uh, here's my belt routing diagram I drew um, time to put the belt back on use it again so I got my belt all routed. What I do is I route the whole belt and then I leave it off the water pump. I, I use that for last. And then uh, when I when I'm moving the the uh, tensioner, I'll I'll put the uh, belt on the water pump pulley on the end. And then uh, that just makes it easier when there's no ridge on a pulley. It's easier to put the belt on. And also watch out for when you put your belt on. Make sure it's on all the grooves on the pulley. Sometimes it's off like that. You can miss it. So the accumulator. Go ahead and disconnect the low pressure switch. Uh, there's a screw down here. I don't mess with this screw. I get the one on the other side. It's a 10 millimeter. 
um, but we'll, we'll get that in a second. So with this one, I used some uh, channel locks, and I was just, you know, I did it came right off. And uh, same with the back, I just used some channel locks and loosened this and grabbed it. Uh, just be careful if it's not working for you, you know, maybe try to find a better way with a wrench or something. So let's just unscrews and then unscrew the front one. Go and pull this hose out like that. Take note of the, the O-ring on it. And then I'm gonna pull this out. You see it's stuck, so what you wanna do is loosen this 10 millimeter down here, like I was talking about earlier. Just, you just have to loosen it. You don't have to pull it all the way out and then just take this off. All right, and then down here, uh, that's where your orifice tube's gonna be. I believe this was a 21 millimeter, and then like a 19 on the other side. This one you actually have to have two wrenches and you break the line free. And then um, the, the orifice tube is down in this tube. And I'll try to run my camera down here for you to see. Yeah, you can see the end of it right there. All you want to do is grab that, twist it, and then pull it out. It has little locking tabs in there. Uh, I got a little tool that's made for doing that. Uh, if you're good with little needle nose pliers or something, you could use that. We'll go ahead and get this in here and pull it out. Like I said, I just I twisted it and pulled it out. Here's my old one. It's kind of black and gross. So I got a new fresh one. I'm going to lube the O-ring a little bit and then put it in. Alright, I'm going to run this in. Alright, get this ran in. Sorry. Alright, yeah, so I got my orifice tube in. Put new O-rings on the line that I disconnected. The orifice tube. Uh, these, this came in the kit. I just matched it up with the old one. Put it on. Now I'm going to tighten this back down. Um, I'm taking this old accumulator and getting the sensor off and putting it on my new one. It also had uh, an O-ring. This accumulator came with the O-ring already on it. And then I'm going to make sure that Schrader valve is tight too. This one was actually kind of loose, so I tightened it up. Now I'm going to put this on it. Alright, so that's nice and good. Now I lube that O-ring as well with the compressor oil. Right here, pack 46. I'm also going to put about an ounce in this uh, accumulator. Alright, and just match up all your O-rings on the lines that you disconnected. Alright, so I put that in. I hooked up my machine to it. And uh, I'm just putting it under a vacuum right now for 30 minutes and then I'll fill it up. Uh, if you don't have this machine, obviously take it to a, a shop to get it done. And uh, I'm going to do this and just test it. Remember to tighten up your 10 millimeter bolt back there. Alright, and so this is after everything. Uh, I got it charged up. It's running good. Pressure's Hey guys, so here's it's running. Um, over the first five minutes, I let it just run. The, the compressor was like just a tad bit chirpy, so it went away. So if that happens to you, just let it run and see what happens. <clears throat> it might just go away. Um, yeah, it's running. I got cold air, so everything's good. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm doing the water pump next.